In the world of Hollywood, movies get greenlit and redlit. They get remade and rebooted. But we are the ideal. I'm Sam Gash, and you are listening to Ideal Remake. Thank you for listening to Ideal Remake. We take movies that either have been, will be, or should be remade and talk about what the ideal version of that remake would be. Today, we're watching Flashdance, and we don't think it's a good idea to go out with the boss. So, returning guest, Meredith Hackman. Is Flashdance a movie that has been, will be, or should be remade? Woof. Well, uh, it's problematic, but, yeah. but maybe we should remake it and make it not problematic. So I'll say should be, but better. Yes, I tend to agree with that. This is a movie that felt very much to me like a product of its Mm. time. Like I get all of the things that people like about it. And if I'm going to be honest, I enjoyed 70 to 80% of this movie. Oh, totally. I was, my pants were charmed right off. Yeah. Yeah. But like, then you look it up and it's like directed by a guy, written by a guy. And you're like, ah, that film, like cinematographer was I didn't need to look that up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I know. The long, so... lingering shots of asses and and swerving feet and and the like emphasis of how young they are. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very male gazy movie. It's a male gazy so... movie, but it, I still had a good time. You know. Yeah, that's the thing. I also had a good time. Yeah. She's she's 18 and her 36 year old boss is definitely stalking her in order to go out with mm-hmm. her. But yeah, other than that, had a nice time. I mean, it's not the first movie I've seen where that happened. Yeah. I think that's I more know. normal than not. Every time I see a movie with yeah. appropriately aged people who neither of them are in positions of power over the other, I'm like, well, well what do you know? Yeah. Well, what's the, there's a new Amanda Seyfried, Kevin Bacon romantic movie that just came out. (laughs) Everyone's like, ew, 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 why? Ew, no. Don't be weird and gross. Why are you doing this, Amanda Seyfried and Kevin Bacon? Uh, Both of you know better. You know better. And the thing is, uh, there are like differently aged people that are in totally reasonable relationships and have real feelings for each other. And it totally happens in the real world. It just does not happen with the absurd regularity that Hollywood wants us to think it's like, it's done in a way that makes it creepy. And and that is not putting shame on anyone that's in relationships with yeah. large ages between them. Cause it totally happens and it should, and it's totally respected. It's just like, Every, it's not every couple you meet, which is what Hollywood would have you believe. Give a 40 year old woman a job. Yeah, you know? <laughs> basically. I mean, I mean, the thing is that like, it's a, a little bit of like, they cast the guy, the, they ca- the produce, it's the dude that they want to hang out with the people who make the movie. Right. And then it's the, the young woman that they're like, well, she's hot. Yeah. And it's creepy. And like, at the end of the day, no, anyone who's in a, like a perfectly happy, loving relationship like that, that's great. Good for you. We can all kind of take a look at like the power gap there and maybe that's not, make that not aspirational. Right. That's that's not, and also like probably 36 and 18 isn't exactly the ages that we want those gaps to be between, you know? I mean, lower than 18 is worse. Because also who? Lower than 18 is worse. Oh, definitely. So I guess I'll put that up I mean, if it's lower than 18, it's, if it's lower than 18, it's a Michael Bay movie. Right. Exactly. Um, Which is... No, like, Oy. like you know about that, right? Where it's like literally, they take a moment in one of the Transformers movies to go, "Yeah, she's seventeen, but I got this card that says we were dating when we were both under eighteen, so it's okay for me." Yes. And it's like, if you have to take a moment to explain this law in your movie, you're a monster, and uh, go fuck yourself. Also, you know, except you wouldn't because you're too old for yourself. Right? <laughs> There's also wonderful women who are of appropriate ages it seems uh odd that you go out of your way to only cast people who are not appropriate ages that's all uh who want i mean sexy women dating an 18 year old who wants to spend any time with an 18 year old like (laughs) who wants to talk to them there's great 18 year olds i mean they're they're very nice some of them are changing they're doing amazing things (laughs) <laughs> they are changing the world. Yeah. That is wonderful. And I will applaud them and sure. support their organization. Yeah. That's it. Over there. Over there. 
<laughs> uh, I just I, I think that it is uh. it is good that at least uh, people are getting on board that this is an issue. I feel like for so much of my life, people are like, what's the problem? And uh, I also think that it's wonderful that there's all these women who would have previously been considered older that are now being considered sex symbols and that women that like forcing women's youth to be a deciding factor in their beauty is a changing landscape. So I think, I think that's happening now. Yeah, and that's good. <laughs> and that's good. <laughs> so normal, nor Normally the next question that I ask is, so tell me about the first time you saw that mo- this movie, but we both saw this movie for the first time for this podcast. Flash Dance correct? Virgins. Yeah. And I think both of us liked it, but. Liked it, but. I think that's fair. I laughed out loud a couple of times. As did I. I also like definitely cringed. Like that stand up is Oof. from the 80s. Oof. Even in the 80s, I wouldn't have been super pumped about it, if I'm being honest. No. I was like, oh, he's a bad stand-up, so I guess I'm supposed to be cringing. And then I was like, no, he's the likable guy. This guy is the guy we're rooting for with his Polish jokes, which he doesn't use the word Polish yeah. for. And uh, says it a lot of times. And I went, okay, uh, we get it. I, and then he like, and they weren't laughing. And I was like, cool, everyone is against the racist jokes. And then he says some other joke about cockroaches and everyone's like, ah, ha, ha this guy's funny and then he goes back to the polish jokes and everyone was like ah we like him now we'll laugh at the racist jokes and i was like uh what 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 are you trying to say i mean it's not like i necessarily trust the comedic sensibilities of the audience at an exotic dancing uh establishment can we stop there but still can we also stop there for a second (laughs) where are we did, yeah, yeah, go for what it. What is this place? Did this place like, like ever city? exist? No, I know we're in Philadelphia. I, I listened to it, the movie we watched. But uh, there's a bar with people <laughs> that do abstract dancing, but like also some break dancing, but they're all very skinny white women. It's like they're not strippers. Like the movie is very clear that this is much better and different than being a stripper. It, but it is a bar that serves burgers and puts on dance shows every night where the women are paid and they're sexy and they have a built-in structure where water is poured on them and there's props. What place is this? Did this happen in the 80s? What was happening? So a couple of different things. (laughs) First of all, I think we need to start by like, at no point are you and I going to, we're going to try very, very hard not to shame sex workers. Oh, I have because a whole there is no thing shame there and built they... in. We should discuss that because this movie has uh, real issues. Okay, yeah. we'll get we'll yeah, get yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a like I've never been to a strip club. They've never really seemed like my scene. Yeah. But my understanding is that there's basically two different kinds. There's the kind that can serve alcohol, in which case the women are not allowed to be naked, and the kind where the women are allowed to be naked, but therefore they cannot serve alcohol. And d- different states have different rules, but basically it's those two different kinds of establishments. So you think that they're dancing in a, like, upscale strip club? I would, I would argue yeah, that it's, that can't well, it's not be a, it. That's, that's why I said exotic dancer. I'm sorry, say that yeah, again? I just, I, I can't, then I, I just can't imagine the props. There's, like, so much, like, they're not, like, oh, the one scene that you warned me about with the strobe light, a woman is in full, like, white like face paint doing like an abstract uh, reaction to how television is affecting our minds. Like that isn't, I don't even understand how that's exotic dancing, I guess. Cause they're taking their clothes off kind of, but yeah, uh, I mean, I, it's, it's clearly just something that's totally outside of my understanding. I, I literally thought it was just like this bar that also allows artists to perform. It felt very artsy to me <laughs> and not, strippy no it's <laughs> it's it's definitely a strip club and they are strippers but they can't get naked because alcohol is served like that's the rule so so they're judgmental of the other kind of strip club yeah because then because uh, the, they aren't professional dancers there's nothing artistic about it they're just naked for money all right is the perception of the movie wow i, I misunderstood oh. this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
The other thing I wanted to mention, like the big thing that Flashdance is known for is what you just mentioned, yeah. the, the the bucket of water scene. And that's right at the beginning and then it never happens Yeah. Again. I kind of loved that. I- and it, and <laughs> I did too, but it was also very blink and you miss it. Yeah. But I think the best part about that is it's like, okay, we all know this is happening in this movie. I'm not waiting the whole movie for it. It happens right away and then I can just like enjoy the rest of the movie. Yeah, because like... It, it, I kind of thought it might happen again, but it never does. And I'm like, cool. Yeah. Okay, that that's the thing. We're done. Sure. It must be the moment from the trailer, so that's why everyone talked about. Right. It. But also, this also speaks to my artistic argument, because what kind of a stage is built in that's catching the water appropriately, and it's not warping the wooden stage? So they've built some kind of Eurydice esque like trench that tr- you know the the uh, off Broadway show Eurydice by Sarah Rule. What? Hold on. <laughs> what kind of trench? It's a it's a it's a trench on the stage, like the off Broadway show Eurydice had. That like when it rains down in the elevator, it catches the water at the end of the stage and somehow recycles it back up, so that way it doesn't affect the stage and and it doesn't like overuse water. I was like, they must have built something in because otherwise, this is a bad idea. So I'm gonna go on a complete non sequitur for a moment. <laughs> I, on the day that I watched this movie, I watched another movie for a a movie club I'm in. And the movie I watched is a movie from like the 50s. Uh, It's Black Orpheus. Okay, yes. And who is Orpheus in love with? Eurydice. Yeah. So it's just, you're all of a sudden bringing up Eurydice, uh, (laughs) Eurydice, whatever her name was. Like at the same time, I was just like, wait, what's happening? All of the, all of the wires in my brain just got crossed and I got so confused. Eurydice, Uh, another. That's amazing. And it's a fun coincidence. Yeah. Another problematic story of the past that is one of the most retold. Yeah. Oh. (laughs) Do you want, do you want to break down the problematic issues with Eurydice instead of doing flash dance? (laughs) I mean, it sounds like uh, it sounds like another episode. Yeah. You'll have to come back. I don't know. Do you got time next week? Yeah, sure. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we really doing? Yeah, basically. <laughs> but all right. So let. So I I don't know is the answer. I'm sure the I'm sure the entire stage is coated in like plasticine or something, just protecting it from all the fluids. Super gross. <laughs> all the fluids. <laughs> And but like if you're gonna put that much you're money right. into protecting the stage from the water that you drop on it, everyone should have a water thing. Like you don't build SeaWorld and then only have one water-based show. Well, I'm sure it was built in to protect the stage from beer. I don't think it's uh, there necessarily for the uh, because again, they can serve alcohol here. Got it. I understand. Wow. Your your history lesson is really Changing I, my thoughts. my extrapolation. I don't know any of this for for, for sure. History extrapolation. I am making guesses. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Len, let's talk. You said you wanted to have a whole separate conversation about like the sex workers in this movie. Well, in in that, I think that's a later conversation. I think because it's such an important part of the movie, obviously, it will be a big part of the conversation about how we update it. Because I think what you said oh, is yes, correct. I agree. That okay. we, that. Um, sexuality in this movie is given really weird tones throughout. They make a lot of strange, somehow like conflating thoughts about it. Uh, they're they're pro sexuality, they're anti sexuality, they're pro uh, strippers, they're anti strippers. It was, um, yeah. I mean, it seemed very as a woman. I was like, what are you trying to say to me as a woman audience? But obviously, it wasn't for yeah. me. I guess <laughs> it was for the men. <laughs> Um, but I do think it's, there are a lot of women that love this movie. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, the women in it are beautiful and the dance, but the, the, I think the relationship with sex workers or strippers are, are complicated and definitely something that will need to be addressed in an update. Yeah. The, the other thing, uh, that I keep in mind is that like, even for some of the dances, like, cause I was a theater kid in college. Like I, I have been friends with dancers for a very long time. And at the end of the day, dancers should be allowed to to present the art that they want to present and like some of that art is going to be sexy or it's going to take sexiness and put, turn it on its head and i thought that some of the dances were very interesting like i didn't actually take a t- take a moment to look up the choreographers but the i thought the choreographers did a good job like the dances i thought were good yeah however they were shot notwithstanding <laughs> like i thought that that was 
for the most part, pretty interesting. And it, like I kept going back and forth of it's clearly very male gazy and the messaging is messed up. But at the same time, these dancers are all very talented and they're doing a good job and that's being shown off. Yeah. And I thought that that was good at the end of the day. Another, like I'm just going to talk about some things that I liked. Like for, like her, like I potentially would just take the relationship out of the movie, but it's flash dance, so the relationship has to be in the movie. But make him a lot younger. Uh, the the other thing that I liked in this movie was I liked that she was also a welder. I liked that she had this this other job to make money that is so entirely separate from whatever is considered traditionally feminine yes. like female or traditionally sexy and it's like yeah no i'm a bomb ass welder i'm <laughs> also really good at this and i thought like i was like and they never really like a couple people were like oh, you're a welder yeah cool and like there's no, she has no shame about no. being a welder it's just like yeah no here's this other job i'm really good at and also he asked and i thought that, that was awesome he asked that pretty early he's like so why do you weld if you're a dancer and she's like i have to make money <laughs> like yeah. Duh. Why does anyone do anything? Yeah. Like, I have to make money. <laughs> do you think I'm making a lot of money at that dance club? Because I'm not. That's that's exposure. Yeah, that's exposure. And also, it's crazy I, that he's like, oh, why, why do you work if you're a dancer at this one club? What? You don't know her aspirations? Maybe she just loves to dance. I don't know. Uh, I Basically, I liked everything. I liked... I liked all of the female things in this movie yeah. and all the dudes were kind of terrible. Like yeah. Nick was kind of a, a weird, super creepy stalker. Mm. Obviously Johnny C and his friend were awful, Oof. the worst. And here's the thing. If they were trying to get people to go to this, like the topless bar, why would they then be themselves at this other bar? <laughs> right? They're just, they're patronizing the other bar to like, steal the talent like there's I, there's plenty like, of women do they consider themselves scouts <laughs> right but also it seems like he owns the the strip bar right the the topless bar i i don't know and also why is he also weird. he's also the one standing in front um like shouting but uh, yeah. yeah he's the one like come on in it's like you can hire people right it seems like you're making good money they they just made Johnny C every single genre of skeezy guy. Yeah. All of them. All of them. Just this one guy. And then they talk about how Johnny C, like this town, like Philadelphia is not that small a town, but they talk about how like Nick and Johnny C used to just like <laughs> go rob places yeah. together when they were poor kids living on the street. I'm like, that's not necessary. We don't need that. We don't care about that. Why? I mean, I I didn't hate that part honestly. When he was like, "We used to steal hubcaps together," I was like, "I let's flush that out. Let's give Johnny C some kind of like, okay, Nick was able to get out of this situation, but Johnny C got pulled right into it. What separates these two men? Like, if we're gonna bother learning about these two men, let's like actually figure out what's happening economically that separated them, that got them into these two positions." Uh, I agree because the other another character that I thought needed to be flushed out because I kept waiting for something was I think his friend's name was Cecil yeah. or Cecil yeah and Johnny C keeps keeps hammering down on this guy and I keep waiting for Cecil to finally like stand up for himself the whole time the actor and, was like, fascinating he kept giving a lot of face that made yeah. that implied he wasn't okay with what Johnny C was doing but they never gave yeah. him a part <laughs> it's like let Cecil like, speak. Yeah, I wanted more from Cecil, yeah. Cecil, whatever. Yeah. Like, I wanted him to finally be like, Johnny C is going to find, like, cross the line and go too far. And that's when Cecil turns on him and stops him. Yeah. That was his arc, and they didn't do it. It seemed very obvious that was his arc, especially in the scene where Johnny C is basically trying to rape Alex. He like it, it's like yeah that was weird. that was weird. He's like get in my car, get in my car. We're going somewhere, and then Richie's walking with her, and then Cecil seems uncomfortable, but then he punches out Richie, and it's like it seemed like that was Cecil's moment, but it was too early in the movie. But it seemed like that was Cecil's moment to be like, I agree. I'm not That's this. when I thought it was going to happen because then Johnny C and Cecil are just still in the rest of the movie together and then Johnny C goes on to date a uh, uh, Jean. And it's like, okay, if if this guy assaulted your friend 
you're going to date him because he gave you a $20 tip. I was like, what is happening? I don't know what scenario that would happen. And I, I totally understand the scenario where a woman gets tricked into dating someone who's kind of sleazy because she feels like her options yeah. are that she doesn't have any options. I totally get that. But like her best friend and boyfriend were assaulted by this man. I, I would think that would give her a lot of well, reasons to stay away. Boyfriend. From what is Richie? Best friend and weird crush for no reason. No, they're dating. They're dating. No, they're not. Richie? Because, yeah, no, because, like, then he, le- like, it's kind of this unspoken, they both have a thing for each other, and then he goes to L.A. I thought they were straight up dating, because her dad says if he hasn't asked you to marry him yet, then he's not going to. Oh, and that's why I, I was like, Richie, I missed that. you just fucking took us off to L.A. without consulting Jeannie? What's happening? Yeah, that's a, and then he comes back and it's like, oh, I take you back. No, 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 no. You fucked off to LA. We're done. And fuck you. And fuck you. And also like, were you in LA? Especially because. Sorry, he didn't even try LA. Like as people in LA currently, like he didn't even, like what was his plan? He came here, he gave it two days and was like, I'm not going to be a waiter. And then he went back. Like, that's not a very good plan. Like, I don't know what you think L.A. is, but you don't show up and they offer you the world, especially for someone who's a bad stand They're like, oh, we love... And they were also clearly stolen jokes. Like, I I, I don't... They were so yeah. hacky that I was like, he clearly didn't even write those. <sighs> it's... Richie. It's like the first couple episodes of, uh, of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel over here. <laughs> uh, it's bad. It's very um, upsetting. But like, and then, and then, so then poor Jeannie ends up dating Johnny C and like the way her, her behavior is in the, in the topless bar, it sure felt like she'd gotten addicted to drugs, yes. but that never came up. No, it, her face it felt very much. Yeah, her face seems like out of it. Like she was on something. And then as soon as Alex grabs her and pulls her out, she's stone cold sober, like very aware of what's happening. Right. But she's sort of because she's also sobbing about, no, I need it. That's my money. And then like the the dollar ends up in like a puddle and and she dives after it. And then she's sobbing in a in a gutter. And it's like, um, I don't know what happened, but you're addicted to something. You're addicted to something. It seemed very like the stories you hear about uh, a pimp like dating someone and then pimping them out. Like that was clearly what they were implying that he like dated her and then forced her to perform or something. But it, it made yeah. no sense. I think that um, Jeannie is a phenomenal character and they did a great job of giving, like she's an ice skater. How many movies have a side character that's attempting to be a professional ice skater? It was mind blowing. I was like, this is very cool. And then. Yeah, I agree. And she was good. And she was good. And then she was also good, but couldn't do any of the jumps. And I was like, that's not realistic. She would make one of the jumps or she's terrible. Or, like, it, I mean, there's definitely cases where, like, it's a bad routine. Like, this is a bad day. And, like, you screw one thing up and then you're in your head. In your you head. get the yips and you just screw up thing after thing after thing. Did you did you skate? Like, that's a... You uh, said that as someone who skated. I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> I, the, the important thing... I, I do podcasts now. You podcast now. I skated. No big. I skated. That was part of the I mean, when, when you grew up in Tucson, Arizona, oh, right. Tucson, Arizona doesn't. <laughs> Not much skating. <laughs> Not much ice in Tucson, no. Arizona. <laughs> Tucson, every few years, the ice skating rink reopens under new ownership and it goes for a couple of years because everyone loves it, but it ends up going out of business because it turns out running an ice skating <laughs> rink in Tucson, Arizona in the middle of the summer. Well, expensive. Super expensive. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't really. Get a chance to get good. Right. When they said skating, I just assumed it was going to be roller skating because I I was like, it's the 80s. I don't know. It's going to be like a weird roller skating thing. So when she was an ice skater, I was like, yeah, let's get it. Let's watch some ice skating. So, yeah, I was all about yeah. it. So then when she turned to this like weird caricature of what happens to broken women, I was it was very disappointing. Yeah. I mean, one of the other things I think we need to talk about, because I think what we're going to end up doing is... While Flashdance itself, as far as I know, has never been remade, I feel like kind of a modern version of it is a movie that came out just last year in Hustlers. Oh, I don't know about that. I felt it was very different. I was going to argue. It is. The co- content is different. 
but it, for for me, just like it, it's women working in a, in the like sex workers, mm-hmm. and it's a movie about female friendship and empowering each other. And it's never really at any point of them just like fighting with each other and getting in their way, which happens a little bit in Hustlers, but like because they get arrested. I I do um, not mean to correct you, by the way, but uh, is sex no, workers? No, please, that's what, is, that's what you're here for. Is sex workers the appropriate term? I assumed that was only for people who's a job involved having sex, not people who performed sexually. Like, I don't know um, if strippers are well, under the th- umbrella of sex workers. I would assume not. My, but... my, my understanding is that yes. Interesting. Um, I trust you. But I, I, well, look, <laughs> I personally am not, and I don't right, know. Right, right. I, I know a couple, I, I have known a couple people who have been professional dancers, mm-hmm. strippers, whatever they w- wish to call themselves. And they're always advocating for better protections for sex workers. Okay. Like, even if you aren't necessarily a prostitute, right. a sex worker can still be someone who works in the sex industry of being sexy. Interesting. Yeah, I, that's and not I, something I've... I, I just wanted to discuss it before we kept saying it with me not knowing, uh, not understanding it as a term. There is a definite chance that I'm wrong. And if that's true, I hope someone reaches out and corrects me because I think that that's a, that's a good teachable moment, especially because this is something that neither you or I... Right are probably qualified to talk about, which is why we're remaking this movie. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't know. I'll be honest. I did not know anything about this movie prior to watching it. Yeah. Like I didn't know that they were working at a, a strip club or whatever you have. I I literally thought it was going to be something like, uh, I don't know, any of the other dance like movies footless. where it's like, we're at a dance school. Yeah. For, it felt like it was going to be very footloosey. And and I, because of the dance school. Or step it up. It is just step up. <laughs> I mean, get it right. But speaking of step up, that is the movie that came to mind when I was watching it. I thought Channing Tatum and her had a lot of similarities. Like, oh, we're, you know, it was like we're uh, not particularly wealthy, but we have aspirations of going to this dance school to get us out of our current situation, which as a big step up fan, as you know. I I was very excited about that, <laughs> uh, but I did think Channing Tatum and uh, Jennifer Beale. Z- sure, <laughs> sure, had a lot in common. The the movie that I agree. The other movie that I thought ha- shares a lot of like narrative arcs for what I think we will want to do is. Did you ever see the movie Don't Think Twice? No. Oh wait, yes. Improv movie. The, the Mike Birbiglia. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Mike Birbiglia improv movie. Yeah. Because uh, it's Jillian something and I can't think of her name. Uh, Jacobs? Uh, Gil- Gillian Jacobs. Gillian Jacobs. Yeah, Gillian. Gillian. Uh, no, you're right. Uh, Gillian Jacobs' arc in that movie of having this opportunity in front of her and keep and continuing to pull herself back and preventing and like literally being her own biggest obstacle that was the arc that felt closest to Alex's arc in this movie. That's really interesting. I like that like a, a lot. I think that... Like a modern retelling. And I think that um, similar to Don't Think Twice, it is a movie about artists. Like, there's a comedian, there's a dancer, there's a ice skater. Like, it is a movie about artists who are who want to make it, but they don't know how. And because they don't have anyone in their lives who has made it, they feel like it's not for them like they don't have the chance yes yeah and i think that's a better movie like i think if we have the flash dance of the ice skater the dancer the stand-up and i think we need to make nick actor or something Mm. like i don't think he should be her boss because that's fucked up so fucked up it's such a shitty Power and dynamic. then and, when he runs after her and they're like yelling at each other because she throws the rock through his window and then he like makes up and he's like that that was my ex-wife we just hang out once a year and she's like oh i guess i forgive you and then all the men are sitting there like a group of men just sitting there watching the whole interaction and then afterwards they react Re- they react like a group of men on the street watching a woman walk by and you know they're like it's very sexual it's very like yeah he did it he got her and i'm like those are her co-workers those are her co-workers watching this Whew. and i also i thought the other like and then there's that moment when they're at dinner and she's eating lobster with her hands uh, which is a 
they kept infantilizing her yes. in really weird and creepy ways. Yes, and that, and that scene was upsetting. Like, the ex- yeah, that, that's a bad mm-hmm. scene. And then the ex-wife comes up and she's just like kind of massaging her shoulder. And it's like, look, I don't necessarily have a problem with someone having like a friendship with their ex because obviously they got a divorce and it ended for, I presume, uh, reasons, right. which they never discussed. And And then she goes, yeah, well, I fucked his brains out. And the ex-wife's like, and like she takes off her jacket and she's like just wearing like a dickie. I mean, she looks fucking amazing. Like I was like, this outfit I mean, is everything. She... <laughs> like everything. However. Look, at no point am I, <laughs> at no point am I going to say that she wasn't gorgeous. Right. I mean, and like the giant, However, I mean, she looks fabulous. But yeah, it's for her to attack this woman and for this woman to come up and be put in a position where they are against each other because they have both had romantic relationships with the same man is insane. It should be her. Absolutely. It should be Nick's job if he is friends with his ex-wife to create a good dynamic between the two of them. I think that in most situations, the ex-wife would probably go out of her way to be like, OK, if this is a real person in your life then maybe I will interact with them. I will at least attempt to make it positive. I think like, unless you're a real dick, you're not in Alex's position sitting there being like, I'm going to be like super sexual and offensive to this woman. And I also don't think she's like, I'm in a fancy restaurant. I'm going to finger your balls with my feet and like suck lobster. It's like, this isn't the character that we've come to know. Like, Why is she suddenly so blatantly forcing sexuality when she's clearly a layered person. Yeah. Which, and her her layers was her most interesting part. Like I want the movie about all of these different artists struggling to make the, the, like to to make it and like the other jobs that they have to have. I think that's super interesting. I think if we want to add an extra layer to the Nick and, I don't remember the ex-wife's name. Um, I would potentially make Katie. her successful. Yes. Sure. Oh, is that who Katie was? Yeah. Okay. All right, whatever. <laughs> um, I would I would potentially make her someone who has made it. Yes. Well, he implied that. I mean, in bed, when they were in bed together, he's like, I got with my ex-wife. She was rich and fancy. And I liked that about her. She was educated. I never knew anyone who was so like successful and educated. So like he did paint the picture that that's who she could have been. It kind of seemed like he used her for her money and then ditched her once he had his own money and then dated an 18 year old. But that's not the impression I got. The impression I got is that he came from nothing. And then finally, when he was successful, he started meeting other successful, wealthy people. And he literally married the first successful Mm. person he met. Oh, that's interesting. And then it turns out, that's not a good way to have a relationship and they got divorced <laughs> and then he dated the and then he saw a dancer at a club the guy he was with read out had her social security number memorized, memorized <laughs> and then he starts stalking her at work which is deeply not okay he also give none of gives that. out her social security number at at random oh you want her social security number sure you got a pen and paper like you're, you're her boss. You're entitled to know everything about her because that's what being a boss is. Ugh. But anyway, in terms of actually remaking the movie, yes. I feel like we have like that core four struggling artists of Nick, Alex, Jeannie, and Richie. Okay. And I feel like those four are kind of like the people we identify with because Alex wants to be a dancer, but she is a, a welder. Nick wants to be an actor, let's say, but... He, I'm even happy with the two of them working together, and he's also a welder. Sure. Richie's the cook who's a stand up, and Jeannie is the waitress who wants to be an ice skater. And I think all of that works. I think that's a good story. I agree. Um, are we talking about the remake now? We are. Okay. So, because of my clear misunderstanding of what this world was, I was like, the only uh, performers that I know that have this kind of space in bars are drag performers. So in my reimagining of it, I think that it it makes a lot of sense for Alex to be a drag queen. And like, I think that that we can still have Richie be a stand-up. We can still have 
Jeannie be an ice skater and Nick be whatever. Um, but in my reimagining of it, um, I have I have Alex as a drag queen. Uh, and did you flip genders as well? So Alex is a male Alex as opposed to female Alex? Um, well, yeah, a, a female impersonator who is a, a cis man. Yeah. Shangela is who I cast. Who? Shangela! I don't know who that is. <gasps> oh my god. The best from RuPaul's Drag Race. And also of the, the new show, We're Here. Very talented actor. Very funny. Well, Amazing dancer. I also considered doing a gender swap, and I didn't necessarily want to get into casting yet. But the I we got to have a conversation about what we want our flash dance to kind of represent. Because I feel like this is a movie that should be about like female dreams and a little bit more about female empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like if we're, and as much as I agree, I don't know. Cause I, I also like the idea of like having, especially if you said it's a, a drag queen. did you also, well, no, did you also gender flip uh, Nick? I didn't. I, I made all the characters queer and some of them, uh, bi or sexually fluid. Um, got it. Yeah, but I, I don't I know kept... how I feel about it because, like, I I mean, it's tough because it's like at, at a little bit we're hindered by the fact that neither of us have a, a strong history with this movie. Yes. That I don't really know what its impact on culture was at the time. Obviously, it's a movie that dudes can really enjoy watching. Yeah, totally. But at bro. the same time, the only people who I know who really love this movie are women. Women also love drag queens i, I would assume <laughs> I'm, that to be correct i'm open to a lot of options i mean i i didn't um i i think that most of the people i cast could could play you know any sort of relationship we gave them but i i will make a further pitch for this because i really like it i think that uh while it is like parts for women and i think that this is a movie with parts for women i i don't know what it would say in a remake if it is, if it is what it is, I think, like you mentioned, there are so many other dance movies that I think are more fun regarding the dance or, you know, like more dance focused or ones that explore the difficulties of being an artist more. I think that um, there are amazing queer performers and stories that haven't been told as much, especially in the performing space and especially by people who are actually a part of the queer community. So that was my thought process. And because the bar scene is so a part of drag life in a way that I couldn't really come up with another uh, modern correlation to. Well, whilst, and, and also I think like sexuality within the queer community is something that is being discussed, needs to be discussed more, making femme queer people feel se sexy and showing them a sexy, I don't, I think it might be a very empowering. I, I don't disagree with you. And I think that's a very strong and compelling argument. Thank you. I'm very compelling. My logic is, it's, and especially, so let's take kind of the dichotomy of someone being both a welder and a dancer. If mm -hmm. Alex is female, then it's the dancer is kind of like the, oh, this is my dream. I want to be a dancer. And that's great. That's supported. And here's this thing I'm also doing to make money that I'm also great at. And that's outside of expectations. And that's certainly something that I think can also be supported and, and uh, raised up. If we switch it in Alex's mail, it's, it, it's, oh, we're a big welder. Yeah. You're a man's man who also happens to be into dragon also is, it's doing dance. And I think that uh, th there's definitely an argument to be made for that because that makes that the core aspect of the movie, of, of the movie and not the uh, side. Uh, right. The side Dealing hustle. with the masculine and the feminine is already a part of this movie. And I think that casting someone who is more maybe tiny and feminine, um, who is a man would, you would be able to discuss those issues within a, a, butch job like being a welder similar that you'd be able to discuss that with a woman being a welder 
but also then you're talking about gender within the dance community and how that translates from a small scene to a larger stage. Yeah. And so for me, because flash dance is already so a part of the dance community, that's kind of where my, that that's where my preference leans Mm -hmm. because I think that as something that's like saying it's really hard to make it in the dance community, it is still hard to make it in the dance community. And and, and to even make it to the dance community, yeah. especially if you aren't, if this is, you weren't the little girl taking ballet lessons since you were two. Yeah. And I, I think that that's important. Like even Alex's dance at the very end, which is a combination Amazing. of all these different things. Like that dance was so good. Cause it's, and like, even there's that moment where she and Jeannie kind of stop and are watching these break dancers. Yeah. Who were also amazing. Like they were, they were fantastic. Yeah. And that was so cool. And then like, she takes kind of that knowledge and incorporates that into her dance as well, because she is a part of both of these worlds. And it's just this full. Appropriation. Like, that dance she does. Yeah, it was, this is who <laughs> I am as a person. It was so amazing. I mean, when she did the breakdancing spin, I laughed out loud. It was ridiculous. I, yeah. I fully enjoyed it. it. Was I, it so was, ridiculous. It was appropriating something, uh, but I I still fully enjoyed it. The fact that it was a clear stunt double doing it was really enjoyable to me. Oh, I, I, I wasn't even sure if that was a woman. Oh, I, I don't know that it was, but it like, it was, I just love a... I love an obvious stunt double. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah. It's with an obvious wig. It, it was pretty funny. I was like, that's not her. <laughs> Just like, like nar- narratively. I liked it visually. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. But, but I'm all for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I picked a, I picked a drag performer who is known as one of the best dancers. So, but I want to hear your yeah, person. Well, I'm, well, my next question is, <laughs> I, I'm not necessarily a fan of drag race. I have many friends who are, but it, it just it's just not for me. Yeah. But one of the things that I can say is that that is often a very particular style of acting and performance. Is this performer whose name I don't know also you better learn it. an actor? Uh Shangela started as an actor, as a like male actor. Okay. And uh found found drag kind of like through acting so that's why and hasn't had to my knowledge a starring vehicle yet i like i've watched i i love drag in whatever capacity i've been able to find it um and i've watched like the drag movies um like hurricane bianca and stuff and you know yeah so you got some scenery chewing but it's a good time but i think that this movie doesn't require scenery chewing but i i think that changel is up for the challenge i think that she's a more subtle actor <laughs> but I'm also open uh, to your choice and I'm adaptable. Yeah. Well, we'll I, I do think we'll get there. And I do think that that's something that the, the problem is I like both ideas and part of me doesn't want to take this away. Cause I feel like if it becomes a drag movie, it's not necessarily a dance movie anymore. And I feel like I don't want to take it away from like the dancers. And I do think it's important to have a, a movie that is, Po- like sex positive sex worker positive mm-hmm. and i i do think that's important because i feel like there's a lot of positivity around drag performers right now um but there's always negativity toward negativity for yeah. like yeah and i i mean because like i said there's hustlers but that's kind yeah. of it it was really good it is really good yeah, I mean, and I think, like, obviously, as pole dancing has become more in the mainstream and um, admired as, like, a actual athletic undertaking um, and artistic, I mean, I, I think, I, I mean, I think you're right. I think, like, stripping is having maybe a comeuppance now is something more empowering than it's previously been um, recognized. I, I definitely think that's. Paul, I, I, yes, I definitely think things are moving in the correct direction. Yeah. But yeah, like it's, they're just so wildly different movies. And I, and I like both of them. That's the problem. Uh, Do you want to tell me who your person is? You hate telling me who your person is. Well, we're not even at casting yet, but uh, I mean, my person, 
my person's kind of an obvious pick because I went with someone who is both a dancer and extremely popular right now and someone who could definitely pull this off and is the right age, everything. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I, there was a distinct possibility. I was like, oh, we're going to cast the same person. Oh, yeah. Mine is a 38-year-old man. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> mine is Zendaya. Oh, I love Zendaya. I'm pro yeah. Zendaya. Like, who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't love Zendaya? She's amazing. Yeah, got to got to kick but it like up. That's, that's what you confuse a uh, step up with. Yeah, or shake it up. Got to shake it up. Shake it up. Yeah, just shake. Yeah, I think it was shake it up. Yeah, <laughs> shake it up. Um, like literally, Zendaya started as a dancer. Like, she, like th- that was one of the things that I tried really, really hard to do. Is for Alex, I cast a dancer. For Jeannie, I cast an ice skater. For uh, Richie, I cast a stand up. Mm. I mean, obviously for Nick, I cast an actor. Um, Like even for uh, Hannah, the old woman, I cast someone who was a silver age actress and dancer. Hmm. Like I tried very hard to kind of like stick with that, that essence of who that character is because that could kind of like, because I, I love it when obviously for movies like this, like even for freaking I, Tanya, uh, Right, Margot Robbie did some ice skating, but she had a a skating double, and then they CGI'd her face onto the skating double. Hilarious. But like, I do like, but the performer needs to be able to do it a little bit, and yeah. that's why I thought it was important to 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 do that. And also, so I think that it's, was... it's fun to cast someone and be able to really show their face while they're doing it, and have those skills, and have the audience know. Oh, this is the thing they're good at. So if we do, if we go the drag route, the drag route, whatever, <laughs> um, what, what is your narrative arc? Like what, what happens? Cause you can't like, other than going and being on drag race, what's the amateur to professional arc that you would be having Alex take? Um, I was going to have him pursue as a man to be a professional dancer. And that drag is similar to Alex uh, doing her flash dancing. Uh, drag is the thing that he does in the clubs, but he wants to be a professional actor. They, um, I also love, you know, I'm a sucker for dance. So I, uh, <laughs> I love So You Think You Can Dance. And one of the Drag Race contestants auditioned a couple years ago um, as a man. And uh, they were like, I don't know. I think maybe you're too femme. You're not butch enough. They like said all this stuff. And, uh, and then he came back in his full drag persona and did it in full drag. And it was kind of amazing. So I think a Lagandra Estranja, if I didn't mention that, um, I think pursuing a professional dance career, but still doing like bar drag is a reasonable arc. I, I don't, I wouldn't change the fact that the lead is a dancer, if that makes sense. But I also think like, um, because I made them older, that was the big problem for me that like, they couldn't be trying to get into professional dance school. Um, so for me, it was like getting onto one of those reality shows, getting onto, into a touring company, uh, something that a real professional dancer would try to do and something that they could probably be told that they weren't butch enough for and then fight back. Yeah. One of the, one of the, my big difficulties for this was I was looking for people who had kind of the background in whatever this thing was, but also mm-hmm. was age appropriate because I thought that a young person coming up in uh, whatever this field was, was important. And it's like, <laughs> this took me a long time to do recasting for this just because I was trying so hard to stick to the age group. And you're like, nah, late thirties. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that's so much easier. <laughs> well, no, and uh, I, thought, I thought about I'm it. because so I- mad. But it is a big change, right? Like I, I did, I was like, yeah. maybe, I mean, maybe we could just get some like super young. And then I was like, I don't like her youth in this. It bothers me. Like not her being a youth, more power to her, but like the relationship with her age is, is a huge issue as we've already discussed ad nauseum. And I think that like her, a lot of the problems I had with it, like she moved here. How long has she been here? She met this older woman and has a relationship with her. Why? Why is she living alone at 18? Why? Like, there are so many unanswered questions in relationship to why she's so young that I was like, this would make a lot more sense if she was older. And not that she has to be in her late 30s. But but I, I it did bother me that she was 18. And I, um, I didn't think the driving factor of her needing to apply to dance school was interesting enough to 
cause all those other issues for me personally. Yeah. I mean, for me, that's the movie. Like it's, it's literally about a young person figuring out what they want to do with their life and going after it. And I have nothing against someone in their thirties, forties, fifties, whatever, like being like, this is this dream I've always had. This is the the life I want to live. And I'm going to now go out and pursue that. I think that's less shown right now. I mean, I just feel like we have so many movies about young people. Like they even had that line that killed me. That was just like, if you give up on your dreams, you die. And it's like, I don't think that's a healthy yeah, that, thing that to was... be telling an audience. Like of young yeah, people. Yeah, that was a, that was a fucked up line. I hated that line. But too. I, but I think that a l- in our childhood, I remember lots of movies telling us that like your dreams are everything. Like pursue your dreams, or you'll be unhappy. And I think that the reality of being a adult in like trying to pursue a career in the entertainment industry is that I I would be fine. I think most of us would be fine if we had made another choice. But we're passionate about this and we're putting the effort in and that's beautiful too. And if someone decides at the age of 30, they want to quit their career and pursue their, you know, artistic dream, then they can. But it is harder and there are other obstacles in your way if you choose to do that. But also if you give up and you want to pursue something that gives you more stability and more happiness in other parts of your life, you're not dead. I don't know. I think about that a lot. (laughs) I yeah, think we all no, do, I, right? And, and the thing is, is, I agree with you. So, I mean, my next question for you is tone. Yeah. Like, th- I think there's a very different tone for a movie of someone who's going after their dream in their early 20s, whereas the tone of someone going after their dream in their late 30s or later. You're right. And but I, I th- feel like... No, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go uh, ahead. What a Zoom conversation this is. No, you. No. I agree, but I think that this movie already had kind of a dark tone that I didn't think necessarily correlated with a typical young person movie. This movie already had a tinge of sadness. It already felt like she had waited too long. That was part of the reason why I was like, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, she's like, I I, I haven't done it yet. And then she shows up to her older friend's house. She's dead. Like, these are things that maybe 18-year-olds are going through, but it seems unrealistic that she anyone's allowing her to feel these things not the person dying but like that she's missed her window of opportunity is insane so so for me age came into this movie in terms of like her relationship like Mm -hmm. the infantile infantilization of alex and in like her relationship like her age was a real problem yeah but for me, it was never about having missed her chance and and to not go after her dream. For me, it was always a class issue with going after like the the the, the professional ballet school. For me, it was always she saw herself as not fancy enough. And I like even the stupid god awful scene where she's eating lobster with her hands. Like she's not refined enough to be a ballerina. Right. But she, like, found this person who believes in her and, like, sponsors her and whatever, who, like, takes her to ballet and, like, gives her these these things to believe in. And it was never about uh, about her age to me so much as I don't belong with these women, with these other men and women, because I haven't lived my life with them and they've been together this whole time and I'm the outsider trying to come in. And that's how it felt to me, not necessarily age-related, like... The if you don't go after your dreams, you're dead. Yeah, but for me, it was more. It, I mean, I'm definitely thinking about class a lot more now than I normally do. But mm. that was the story for me. It was the outsider breaking into an industry that had otherwise excluded her, but showing that the things that she brought to this industry also had value. Yeah, which is demonstrated in the dance at the end, and that's why it's like, yeah, she has the she has this blue collar job. And she's pursuing the ivory tower or whatever. But that's what makes it interesting for me. Low class to perceived high class. I think the thing is, having seen this movie so long after it was released, I've seen I've seen this movie before. Like, Save the Last Dance literally has that same ending. Like, she puts hip hop into her ballet audition. Like, it just does. So to me, I was like, well, I've seen that. Like, uh, sure, that's already that's already in one of my faves. <laughs> um, so, 
and I think a lot of movies are like, I mean, that's what Step Up is. He's like, I'm going to bring my street style into uh, this. I mean, yeah, it is. You know. And and you know where all of these movies got it from, right? That all of that comes from Flashdance. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, because I'm seeing only the reverberations of this movie before seeing this movie, I feel like I've seen it. So if we're bringing it to a new audience, I think a lot of times when they're remaking movies, they're like, we're just going to do the thing we did originally, but we've moved past it. We as an audience have moved so far past it. Even if you saw the original, you've seen so many reverberations of that already that you, you have to change it in some way. I don't think, I don't think you have to change it in the way that I'm saying. And I think that you can still have a young person experiencing things, but I, I don't think an ending of, well, she put break dancing in it is enough for a modern audience. I think we've seen it over and over again. I think, I think what we're potentially arguing about comes down to what is the essence of flash dance. And I feel like for me, the essence, like, and at the end of the day, regardless of what we end up picking, Mm -hmm. it's, it's no matter what it's outsider looking in. Right. That's the essence of flash dance. Yes. And then told through the scope of dance, struggling people, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think we, we both agree on this, like kind of the, the core story of people, like people in entertainment struggling to make it in entertainment. Yeah. which I don't know why that appeals to us. But yeah, I don't know why we were affected by it. Holy yeah. um, <laughs> I think it's also, and, and so then I think what we're disagreeing on is what is the thing now that most exemplifies kind of those ideas? Yeah. And, and so think- what you're saying is, like I'm saying like class it's it's low class trying to break into this upper class and you're saying it's drag trying to break into quote unquote legitimate dancing. Right. I think, and I think that like having someone like Zendaya is interesting. I think like obviously through like a Misty Copeland, a lot more young black women have been put in the spotlight as far as their ballet technique and uh, have, I mean, having a role model, has allowed more people to break into something that used to just be very white. Um, and there's probably something in that also. And it's, I, I, the world of dance, while it fascinates me, also terrifies me. I think that it's a very scary world, especially for young women. Yeah, yeah. I mean, plus it fucks up your feet. Yeah, your poor little feetsies. I don't yeah. Like, I don't like seeing all those broken toenails. You're- your feet are gonna be are gonna be messed up forever. I mean, beyond your feet, your knees like it it does it does a lot to a body, ballet specifically. But basically, what I'm getting to is, at the end of the day, you and I made we took kind of this core concept and we went two completely different ways, and we have two different movies. Yeah, and I don't think either one is inherently better or worse than the other one. I think no. just what we ended up with are different movies and. If you're pulling in a lot of people from the drag world, I'm just simply not going to know who they are. So what I think we should do is I think we should go through both of our castings separately. I think we should do like all of mine and then all of yours and say, these are our two separate movies because flash dances can be, can be both of these different things, but these movies are so different that it's, it doesn't really make sense for us to compare them. Okay. And I don't think either idea fails go ahead the only drag people i have are the dancers the dancers are a lot of this movie (laughs) that's true but like i like or i guess i also made richie a drag person okay let's do it your way the other other, (laughs) i mean the other problem is that like your actors are all 15 years older than mine that is true (laughs) i brought everyone up to nick's age i brought everyone down (laughs) to alex's age (laughs) right (laughs) because i'm like Nick shouldn't be involved in this. So that's why I like, I basically, Nick is the one that I completely like, absolutely not. Everyone else. I'm like, yeah, I got nothing against this individual person. I'll bring Nick down. Everyone else is fine. Right. No, you said, <laughs> take all these young people. I hate young people. Let's get them out of here. Why can't old people have a shot? You know, <laughs> when do old people get to dance? Basically. 
And uh, that's so, good. so that's that's what you said, and uh, <laughs> that's what you are now on tape having said. Okay, great. So, so what I that's what I think we should do now is I'm going to take you through my cast and my my logic for like and up through writer and director, great. and then we'll do the same thing for yours because we're so different at this point, and they're both good ideas, but. Yeah. And so are you okay with that? I am. I also believe that even if we take parts of yours and parts of mine, that that it will work. I, I think that queerness is inherently involved in a dance community. I don't think... So I, like, I understand oh, yeah, why, for the, sure. I, why I, the drag I, queens wouldn't work, but like the other people I think are probably relatable. Yeah, I agree with that too, but I also think the age discrepancy makes those relationships potentially questionable. Totally fair. Um, with the or maybe make them uh, bigger. Exception of Johnny's C. Bigger? <laughs> like maybe make the age range even bigger. Maybe we go 18-year-old, 80-year-old. Maybe that's the movie. Again, the Amanda Seyfried, <laughs> Kevin Bacon movie has come out already and everyone says no. Everyone says no. <laughs> it's gross, bad, and weird. Okay. <laughs> I'm very excited to hear your pitches. My Alex is Zendaya, who she has the dance background. She's a phenomenal actress. And this feels like the sort of thing where she can kind of do a blend of these different styles of dance while also can kind of do a blend of class, of like, like can come from a lower class family works in like, I love the fact that Alex is a welder in this. And I love the fact that it's cause like there I've, I've heard talk to people and like, and it's so weird that she's a welder. I'm like, yeah. And that's amazing. Women can be welders. That's fine. That's great. I love it. And I love that it's like this tiny little thing that's like, that's what she's doing for money. She doesn't want to be a waitress. She wants to, she gets to put one metal thing attached to another metal thing. I think it's rad. And so that's why I thought, and I love it. My Nick is an actor named uh, Tyler Posey, who is from Teen Wolf. Uh, He's also in Jane the Virgin. Oh, I know Tyler Posey. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. He's adorable. Very cute. What I, Yes. So what I did was I made Tyler a few years older than Zendaya, and then I made the ex-wife a few years older than that, um, just like f- for whatever reason, and especially because that way the ex-wife can have made it. And I'll get to the ex-wife in a little bit. Sure. Um, Hannah, my uh, the old woman, I made Bridget Bardot. She's Ooh. a Silver Age a- actress and dancer, um, and I think she's 85 or something right now. But she had this career of she, she was in black and white movies in the silver screen and it's and she has this incredibly long IMDb page and I thought that it's just this amazing thing of like well yeah if anyone knows how to make it as a dancer it's this woman interesting uh, and so that and I looked up like if she'd been performing recently and she was performing up until even last year she was in a movie she or within the last couple of years she was in the. Uh, uh, Blake Lively, Anna Kendrick movie. Oh, really? That escapes. Yeah, yeah with the, yeah with I the think of the name of this movie. She's one of my all-time favorites. A simple favor. Attempt. Simple favor. I love Brigitte Bardot. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I thought she was a good choice. Then next, I have Jeannie. So finding an ice skater who is also an actress <laughs> was a little difficult. Yes. But luckily, Netflix did that work for me. And Netflix has come out with a show called Spinning Out, which is about ice skaters trying to make it in the world of ice skating. And, okay. it, and they are real ice skaters. And this was a character that I'd actually considered doing a gender swap, but the two male ice skaters in that were both late 30s. One of them is, I think one of them's a dude from Queer Eye or something. Um, <gasps> Jonathan Van Ness? Like, yeah. He was my pick for Jeannie. And I... And I <laughs> Well, we definitely considered uh, the same person, but that's the idea. Like, so th- like I put pu- I pulled from that because uh, the actress I went with is uh, Amanda Zhu, okay. Zhao, um, because she is an ice skater who acts, and so it worked out. So for Richie, the stand-up, I went with uh, a young um, stand-up who I've actually seen perform and is extremely funny. He's younger than you think he is, but he's so good. And his name is Josh Johnson. Uh, he doesn't hasn't done much acting, but he's a very good stand-up, and he's a writer for The Daily Show. Um, okay. I saw him when I went to go see Trevor Noah do stand-up 
Uh, Josh Johnson was one of his openers and he's excellent. So I wanted to cast a good stand up to replace the bad stand up. Oh yeah. So for my Johnny C, uh, this is going to involve you looking up this person on, <laughs> on IMDb. Uh, this actor's name is Scott Cruz. Cruz is spelled K R U S E. And he's kind of done like some bit parts here and there. He's been on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He was in Man Camp. But when you look up this picture, you're going to go, oh, look at this guy. Look at this hipster dude. Look at that mustache. (laughs) This guy's up to something. He's clearly evil. Because like you're not going to have like this slick back hair greaser shitty human being anymore. Like that's not a modern interpretation of the shit human. He's very No, it's going to be the guy who's. Yeah, that's it. He's going to be the 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 cute dude who's like, oh, you're secretly a shit bag. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like the person who's like, I'm just a nice guy. It's Sam, fine. You don't hey, need to explain what a you shit want a bag job? is to me. I know plenty of shit bags. You're right. Look, Meredith, what what I'm actually saying is, look, you don't <laughs> understand. Let me explain it to you. Oof. But yeah, so that, like, <laughs> that, that, that was my idea. <laughs> uh, and then for his friend, um, I went with uh, a an actor named Jeff Ward, who I know from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he's also in something called Vampirifica, and I thought that was funny. <laughs> sure. Oh, I like Jeff Ward. He's got a nice face, too. Yeah, and I wanted, I want there to be this moment where Scott Cruz, the Johnny C character, is about to go too far, and Cecil's like, no, enough's enough, I'm stopping you. Mm. so yeah i have another dancer here just because i wanted someone who's who'd been dancing for a little bit longer i didn't remember the name of the actress but like there's that moment where alex goes in and she's talking to this kind of like person who at the beginning she had this uh a little bit more antagonistic relationship with who at the end is like i've been doing this for a really long time and it's just it's the thing i'm good at and it's the thing i kept doing so i went with uh an actress named brooke williams for that I also know her from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but she's also on 12 Monkeys. <laughs> All these people are just Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. people? Those three are. That was it. <laughs> it's just like, I, I, it's the show I've been watching recently. And <laughs> it just, I ended up, I ended up finding people for these three parts. And I, was, and I didn't necessarily mean to put them in a row, but it was just kind of funny. Like I cast her first uh, because I think she's great. And she has like this really cool and interesting energy. Mm. And and like she can play someone who like puts up this nice front but you can like but like is slightly a little bit broken and it she's also a phenomenal performer um so then the other character i have is the ex-wife so for the ex-wife it's someone who's not in the movie very long but it's someone who's made it and it's someone who's a, a couple years older than my nick and for whatever reason, it didn't work out. First person uh, Nick met when Nick kind of started seeing a little bit of success. And so for that, I went with Mila Kunis. Because why not? I've heard of her. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't necessarily like see Mila Kunis and Zendaya being like antagonistic to each other. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go be friends. Nick, you're cool with that? I'm not, wait, what? And then they like go off and like. Yeah, I want to have that scene of them connecting. I yeah, I, I agree. I think that's important. Yeah. I also want to backtrack for a second. Um, the other dancer who she has a like weird relationship with, she has that weird speech at the end where she's like, I used to buy costumes too, just like you. But I now they're old and I have them in my trunk if you want to see them. <laughs> that was the whole speech. And I was like, I don't understand this speech. <laughs> Did you understand the speech? Yeah, the speech was basically, <laughs> I, like, I used to put all of this effort into the dances too, but I've realized over the years that the people who are here don't care about that effort. They just care about looking at us. And so but that's just what I do. why does she I keep do. I just doing out, it? I, because it's easy and she makes money. One of the toughest, like the actualizing self-change is one of the toughest things people can do. And it's a lot easier to do the thing you're familiar with than to do the scary thing. Like literally that's the example of, for Alex of here's what I might become if I don't take this chance and make myself uncomfortable and go audition to be a ballerina Mm. or ballet school. Like this is literally my future. If I don't take this opportunity, that's what that scene is. It's yeah. I used to be just like you, 
but then I didn't pursue this dream. I just settled into whatever rut it is that, and again, there's nothing like, there's nothing wrong with anyone who settles into a rut, but I also would highly encourage people like you got to take the shot. Even if you miss, at least you'll know that you tried. And I feel like that's more important. And it's, but I feel like that her character is, I didn't try. I gave up. Got it. And so that's why I thought that character was important. I like that speech you just gave. I think we can use, we can give that to the writer to use. It's a good thing I uh, recorded it. Great. So, (laughs) because this is a movie about exotic dancers, strippers, whatever you want to call it, um, the obvious choice for writing and directing is the woman who did Hustlers. And I don't disagree with that, but I wanted to put more emphasis on the dancing. So I made Lorene Scafaria just the director. And obviously she'll work kind of hand in hand with uh, the woman I uh, have writing it. The woman I have writing it wrote Bring It On. And she also wrote Stick It about (gasps) uh, a woman who uh, making it it in, what was it? Gymnastics. Gymnastics. Thank you. Excuse me. (laughs) Yes. Gymnastics. And like, it's these amazing performative things that it's and and it's about the performance like hustlers was kind of about the it was it was this character piece but for bring it on and for stick it like it's also about the performance like and the yeah. performance has to itself be art and it has to be a part of it and so that's why i thought jessica uh bendinger or bendiger working together with lorene scafaria would make an excellent team to kind of create to, especially because i'm sure both of them grew up with this movie to kind of take this story and remake it and recraft it into a more modern interpretation of kind of the, one of the origins of modern dance movies, not modern dance, but a dance movie that is modern. So Lorraine Scafaria, I didn't know this. So she's the director for Hustlers. She also wrote it. She also wrote it. So you are having her direct it. You're just having, I'm having, write it. I'm having her direct it, but it. I'm having the writer be, uh, this other woman. I understand. I understand. Got it. So that's kind of the, 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 that's, that's my version of flash dance. That's the, that's the young people struggling to pers- follow dreams that they, that they're scared of, t- that they're young enough to be scared of, of, of pursuing. So that's, that's my beautiful. version of flash dance. And I like Thank that you. writer and director combo very much. I think those are very, I think that the sexiness and the way that hustlers was filmed speaks to the sexiness that this movie needs. And I think that yeah. this movie is funny. Like, it you it, you want it to be even funnier because it like it's inherently like a like a honey or like a like any of those dance movies like you want some a little bit more jokes and joy in it so and it already has some so I think that having a you know fun writer is and, and, and I think it's important for it both to be written and directed by women is because it is a sexy movie like it like yeah. at the end of the day it's a sexy movie and there's nothing wrong with that but I don't but it, it shouldn't be leering. I also picked women for writers and directors. I think I totally agree. I think that I, even I, I would have been shocked if you did not. <laughs> well, I think that even if it's uh, you know, like a contemplation on queerness and the queer community, that like at the center of it is feminism and is somebody who's not using the male gaze either, you know, to identify anybody. Yes, so I, 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 I agree. Yeah, but I think it should st- maintain um, its sexiness. I think it, it is a sexy movie and should yeah, stay sexy. I agree with that as well. Okay, here's my list. <clears throat> uh, Alex, as I already said, I think should be Shangela. Um, I'm sorry you don't know the drag people. You're missing out a little, but it's okay. Yeah, I, um, I've, I've, watched, I've watched an episode or two, and it's just simply not for me. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, uh, and I respect it. Uh, for Nick Hurley, I P.S. I only cast uh, people who have come out as queer or, or in some of the supporting roles. I cast allies. Just okay, great. Yeah, just for the record. Um, good, good research, <laughs> good, good, good background work, and uh, yeah. you, you did extra work, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. I just thank want you, you to Meredith. constantly tell me thank you for all my hard work. I just need you to support me in all things. Um, for Nick, no, you put I, a lot of thought into this, and that's the sort of thing that some of my guests don't do, and I appreciate that you did. Right, and I want you to I, remember I 100% that. appreciate it. <laughs> for Nick, I p- picked uh, Lee Pace, who I didn't uh, realize was part of the queer community until I did this research. Um, one of the sexiest men of all time. I also didn't. 
Yeah, I didn't know that either, but the pie maker is amazing. Ugh! Everything. I just, I would watch him in, like, covered in makeup, in, you know, Guardians. Anyway, yum. Um, <laughs> for for Hannah, I picked, um, I went younger. I didn't go too old. Um, and I went for an ally. I went for Fran Drescher because I love Fran Drescher! <laughs> <laughs> There was no good reason. I just love Fran Drescher and uh, she should be in this movie. Um, for Jeannie, I picked two people. Now so. I got to ask the question. Yeah. Hold on. For for Hannah, are you going to kill her? So in your movie, is no. Fran Drescher going to die? No. I thought, I thought that the, the death was unimportant. They made nothing out of it. If you're going to kill somebody, make it count. And I think that other dance movies have done a much better job. Like it's become old hat to kill off the the kid like all the young people in dance movies die um yeah. and i don't think that we should be we well should you gotta have more <laughs> you gotta have something to motivate you to save the rec center right you gotta save the rec center but i don't think that this motivates her to do anything hannah's death i think there are other more interesting forms of motivation that we can explore i agree also i i love all the movies in which the the kids die to you know support them but i just have seen <laughs> i've just seen it a lot is all uh, for Jeannie, I picked two people because I did two options for Jeannie and for uh, Richie. Um, one I already said was JVN, Jonathan Van Ness, who is non-binary um, and uh, to my knowledge has very little acting experience, but was the only person I could think <laughs> of who is a semi-accomplished ice skater and a personality. Um, then when I realized how much of the movie uh, Jeannie was involved in and how like... Uh, uh, up and down and full the part was I uh, picked Aaliyah Shawkat who I know you've cast in other things before I don't know who that is Aaliyah Shawkat she's um, Remind me? From, from Arrested Development she's um, maybe Search oh, Party yeah, great yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah and uh, she's bisexual so I cast her and obviously people don't need to be the parts they're playing but I thought it would be interesting if the character was bisexual as well and if Johnny C was uh, male, and if uh, Richie was female. So, uh, for my Richies, I put uh, Bob the Drag Queen to be opposite Jonathan Van Ness, or Carrie Browstein to be opposite uh, Aaliyah Shawkat. We're just going to keep going. You're not going to react to anything. Okay. <laughs> uh, for Johnny C, which I just wrote creep next to. I don't know who any remember. of these people are. I'm sorry. I'm trying to listen. Uh, Carrie Browstein is from um, uh, Portlandia. She's the woman on Portlandia. Oh yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, I need I need that context. Uh, and uh, give give us some for every single person you're casting. Okay. Tell us what they're from. We're not okay. going to know their names. Okay, all you, right. Me as a like, unless you're saying me Kunis, we need to know who this person is. You knew who Fran Drescher was, though, right? Oh, Mister Sheffield. <laughs> uh, that's going to be the context you get for everything. Is me doing impressions of them now? Um, for Johnny, I C hate that. <laughs> For Johnny C, I gave two options also, uh, which was Zachary Kinto, I can never pronounce his last name, or Wentworth Miller. I thought both of, I thought, I mean, I love Zachary Kinto, and I think he's really sexy, and as is Wentworth Miller. G Wentworth Miller is from, uh, like, Prison Break and all the CW shows. You know who he is from the CW yep. shows. I, I do, but you still got to give us the content. Okay. And um, Zachary Kinto from Star Trek. Um. And for many things, both of them, I think, can have a dark energy, but also, like you were saying, I don't think you want someone who's like an obvious sleazebag. I think you want someone who can kind of be a presence and who you would believe and someone who you'd believe would be trying to manipulate the either the men or the women in this situation. Yeah. For the owner, bar owner, I put B.D. Wong because I wanted B.D. Wong, who is the father on Aquafina is Nora from Queens. And he is just, uh, he's 60 years old <laughs> because he's, he's very <laughs> sexy. And <laughs> I'm like, clearly a uh, pandemic has got me horned up again. Every time I, I go on this podcast, I'm horned up. I shouldn't make excuses anymore. But I, when I realized his age, I said I'd make him the owner because <laughs> I was like, I, I can't, I can't, but I, I would have cast him as Nick. I love him for the ex-wife. I put Carrie Washington <laughs> because I think she reminds me of, or she makes me think of someone fancy, but also someone that I can see relating and being open-minded. Also, she's an outspoken ally. Cecil Cecil, I put as Keenan Lonsdale, 
who is a uh, Kid Flash on the CW. For the dad, for Jeannie's dad, I put Paul Giamatti. Oh, okay. Of Sideways. Great. And then yes. uh, for Jeannie's mom, I put, I'm going to mispronounce her name and feel like an asshole, Haim Abbas, who I'm going to read her credits because I know her face more than her credits. I, I picked, I wanted, because Aaliyah Shawkat is uh, half Middle Eastern, I wanted to make sure that was represented in her parents. Um, if we went for an Aaliyah Shawkat, which is what I ended up leaning toward. Uh, known for modern Blade Runner, The Visitor, Inheritance, Munich. So top, top build. Great. All right, I'm on the secretary. I really went into it. Secretary, I, I put Gia Gunn, also a drag race persona. Um, she's just funny. She's probably not going to be a great actress. I don't care. I love her. Uh, for one of the, I cast the dancers. For Tina Tech, who was the one with the short blonde hair who kept going, is he going to call me? Um, I put Mo- Monet Exchange, uh, who is a, a drag performer. That character I also wanted to mention when I looked it up uh, is the actress from Dirty Dancing who get, gets pregnant and is like a main part of Dirty Dancing, which was fascinating to me because I was like, I know her face. I know her face. But it was such a completely different character. Like this was a comedic like, oh, gosh, I just can't get this date. And that's like a very <laughs> like deep um so I was well I remember when I was looking the movie up on IMDb I saw that this person was known for flash dance and dirty dancing but I couldn't figure out who she was because her picture was now her modern self right and I remember thinking it was really interesting that it's someone who was in these two big dance movies I mean clearly I I she's actually funny. an amazing dancer uh, yeah I think that like all of the shots clearly. of the dancing is clearly her uh but I also think she was really funny I really loved all of her like oh um and i and she's one of my favorite parts of dirty dancing which is a classic film um, yeah this was a movie that like I, I thought a lot more time and energy could have been spent with these other dancers who were all super interesting and then they just kind of like fall by the wayside like they create this interesting dynamic and then we ignore all of them crazy and then they they cast one black character who says two lines and i thought that maybe we could <laughs> i like that there's a third friend but i didn't like uh, that dynamic but i made it kennedy davenport who's another drag person and then the one that she's the bad relationship with i made Alyssa edwards who is a famous dancing drag queen has her own show called dancing queen um and i could see there being a pretty fun rivalry also Almost all of these people have Southern accents. <laughs> I assume that's not what people sound like in Philly. Uh, I do not think we should move from Philly. I think it's a Philly movie, but I'll, I'll figure out how to explain it. And then I cast the, cast the street break dancers as Twitch and Fiction from So You Think You Can Dance because I was just watching Hollywood Game Night and Twitch was on it. And I want to watch more Twitch. The For writer, I put... I, someone that I know you have made the writer like 20 times, but Phoebe Waller-Bridge, because um, I thought it was I've never used Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Really? All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm putting it out there. Um, or Diablo Cody. Um, and remind me, remind me who Diablo Cody is? And actually, uh, Diablo Cody. Just to be safe, tell, tell people who Phoebe Waller-Bridge is as well. Just uh, to be Phoebe safe. Waller-Bridge uh, is, oh gosh, what's the name of her show? Fleabag. Fleabag. <laughs> Fleabag. Um, and also she's produced a bunch of amazing things, killing yeah. Eve. And there's also a good chance I'm wrong. There's a good chance I've, I have used her, but I, I simply don't remember. She just seems yeah. like someone I feel like you would. Um, and Diablo Cody from Juno, a young adult, which is one of my personal favorites. And the reason I used her um, is in association with my director. who They are the writer and director of Jennifer's Body, which, while not a one-to-one with this movie, a very sexy movie and satirical movie that I thought would... Um, play really well with the feminist importance of it while also still maintaining the sexiness. Um, and Karen Kusama in all of her work pretty much is really focused on, on a feminist gaze and the empowerment of the, her female leads. Got it. Cool. Interesting. An extremely different movie. <laughs> we always do. This is why we've never just done the two of us because we need a buffer to break our, we do need a buffer. <laughs> Look, the important thing is we learned that now. Because this is what the fourth. This is the fourth time you've been on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. This is the first time it's just been just you. And yeah, how I are you we, dealing with it? Is it okay? You've been you, you. You haven't been as mean as you normally are, so that's been nice. 
I'm only mean when I feel supported by a third party. <laughs> wow. Uh, you're, a, you're, a, you're a social jerk. I'm a social jerk. I'm a social sociopath. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's what bullying is, I right? think it worked out fine. Yeah, no. uh, but I, now we know. We, we, need, a, we need a tiebreaker next time. <laughs> I will be very supportive of your choices. I think you made a lot of good choices and I am, I am happy to meet in the middle because this is nice Meredith who doesn't have backup. I, well, the reason why I had us read our two casts separately is because I legitimately don't know where we can meet in the middle on this. These are just two different movies. Yeah. Well, like, nor, like this is only the second time I've ever done that. And uh, it, it's just because these are different movies. We can't do anything about that. Hmm. And they're just as valid as each other. Oh, brother. Well, uh, here's here's what I'm going to propose. I, I don't know what there's left to propose. The episode is over. Oh, no. Well, who wins? How do we find a winner? There is no winner. There is no winner. It's just these are the two uh, remake ideas that we have. These are both Ugh. ideal remakes. It's a Ugh. draw. Ugh. Wow. What a disappointment. That's like, uh, yeah. there's a tie. Uh, flash dance uh, colon the future is dance good that works works better for mine <laughs> but, uh, all right so we've reached the end of the podcast we've gone through we've re we recast it we have our movie meredith what uh you hate this just what uh what social media do you want to promote oh yeah i mean i i don't know if i hate the social media part as much as i hate the not winning part i you can follow my twitter at big underscore mayor uh you can follow i'm doing like a stupid joke instagram that i'm having a good time with where i make fun of people's advertising that's stupid it's called <laughs> best place to cry at work and it just has a bunch of uh, ads that i think are funny and me making fun of them um instagram seems to think i'm promoting those things which i'm not uh, most recently there was a photograph of somebody's junk in shorts uh for a brand called chubbies so don't so know what's who comes instagram? up with these things best place to cry at work no spaces uh best place to cry i I say obviously donate to all the stuff that you should already know to be donating to and wear a mask and don't be an idiot or an asshole i agree with all of those sentiments thank you good do i win that if you're interested in uh, sure. If you're interested in following me, I am at Sam Gash, S-A-M-G-A-S-C-H on Twitter. Or if you want to follow the podcast, it is at Ideal Remake on Twitter or Instagram, but mostly Instagram. If you have a second, please go online to your Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review and write a nice thing about us. It's not something Meredith has ever done, but you might, and it would be a nice thing. I've never done it on any podcast ever, so I will do that today and you'll be my first. I don't know how. I'm too old to know how to do it. Every time I start, I get scared. Well, if there's one thing we learned about Flash Day, it's a great time to learn new things. (laughs) That's what it's about. That's what Flash Day is about. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And that we're all young at heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yeah, that's, that's the end of the episode. Meredith, what is your favorite quote from the movie Flash Dance? I I still have those uh, costumes in my trunk if you ever want to see them. (laughs) Weird. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Thank you so much, Meredith. Stay stay safe out there. (laughs) Ditto.